Welcome to Pub Talk, the unofficial official craft beer podcast of Oklahoma, where we're all about the three B's, beer buddies, and bullshit. I'm Michael, and with me as always is a man looking forward to starting the show real quick as we get closer to the day celebrating St. Patrick. Jeremy? Hey, yo. On today's show, we're back with another home episode to catch up and drink a beer or two. If you like what you heard today, don't forget to hit that like and subscribe button wherever you're listening to us right now, and show us some love all over social media at Pub Talk Podcast. All right, let's get in the first round. You know, they brew 10,000 bottles of beer a day. I drink 45 off the assembly line, and I'm the asshole. Still hear it in my head all these yeah. fucking years later. Uh, so what are you drinking today? Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm drinking uh, an easy drinker, I guess. Uh, it's Hook Echo um, from Coop. It's a hazy IPA, uh, 6%. Um. Yeah, I mean, it's fucking tasty. It's, it's a nice, easy drinking, hazy IPA. Um, it's, it's actually, I picked up a six pack last weekend um, because I kept seeing people post that out of those mix packs and stuff for the last year or so yeah. and had been wanting to try it, but I had not, I had not seen the mix packs around town. Um, but I finally, I guess they started doing these in six packs um, recently. So I grabbed some at Reesers of all places. Right on. And it's good. It's good shit because uh, while we were kind of talking and waiting to get the show started, I uh, drank half of the first one, so I just opened it up. <laughs> nice. Um, yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's good. It's, it's, it's got a nice, uh, like, it's got that hop after bite, but it's also uh, pretty smooth and, and easy drinking. So it's what I expect. Um you know, Coop does IPAs right to uh, F5, right? So um, I, I I don't know. I guess just because it's not like super remarkable, I, I struggle to put it in four territory, but I'll get like a three, three, eight, five. Right on. Has there been anything about them, uh, their new place or anything? Have you seen anything about that lately? Probably not. I've not. I've, I've seen that they are doing a 13th anniversary party and I think it's the first time in a couple of years that they've really, you know, done anything with the pandemic going on and everything. Um, but no, I don't think, in fact, I think wasn't, wasn't Tom coming from one of their anniversary parties when we saw him a couple of years ago after the expediture episode. Sounds right. So that was probably the last one they did. So they, they probably just skipped last year, but, Anyway, um, yeah, they're doing their anniversary party. Uh, I, I don't remember the date, but I saw it posted recently. So, um, but I haven't seen anything about the new tap room. Right on. What are you drinking? Well, I am drinking a beer from uh, Skydance Brewing. It is their DDH Fancy Dance. It is double dry hopped with Strata. Uh, Citra or Strata, I guess. Sure. It also says Citric Mosaic and brew one below it, but I, I thought he just did different. Like it was always a new. Hmm, I don't know. The side says double dry hop with Strata. You can't see it because oh. fucking overexposed as fuck. But on the front, it has all the other ones listed below. So I don't know. Actually, here it just says DH with Strata too, so I'm assuming that's probably what it is. Anyway, six point eight percent ABV, uh, and fucking delicious. Were you able to get that locally? I was. Um, so I have been wanting to find a different, like, a place to pick up beer because I just don't have one anymore. Um, and I went to Park Hill. I have not been there since they. Uh, since I guess they renovated the building or whatever they did years ago. But um, this, this is the one at 51st and Lewis. Yeah. Made it nice on the outside and everything. No. It's been a while since I've been there um, because when I went there that time, I was completely underwhelmed. The beer selection wasn't very good. Uh, so I never went back. Um, but I went back today and the beer selection is fucking awesome there. That whole little cave as soon as you go into the left, a lot of local beer. Um, I mean, they had shit from like some of the places I haven't had, like the Cape and uh, Good Cause and just a bunch of good local beer. Um, 
so I picked up this one. I was hoping they had a they had a spot for that yo hops or whatever by Skydance, but it was sold out, which was mm. kind of depressing. But this is still fucking awesome. Uh, they make awesome IPAs. You can tell they love making IPAs from the interview we did with Jake. Um, yeah. So it was awesome to to get this one. Plus the DDH Fancy Dance series is fucking awesome. Um, been a big fan of it ever since the first time we had it. Good stuff. Definitely over a four. Uh, I'll go with 4.20. Right on. Delicious. And I don't remember if I said, but six, yeah, I did say, never mind. It's good. Well, hey, it's been another over a month. <laughs> Life and whatnot, man. I, I don't know. People probably get tired of us saying that. Like, we're going to keep doing these, but yeah, the frequencies. It is, it is what it is. Yeah. A lot going on. A lot, yeah. lot going on. Hard to work these things in <clears throat> as much anymore. Yeah. Um, yeah, I guess, well, I guess we can throw out, like we should have been at core four today for their, uh, second anniversary party. So first of all, happy anniversary to them. Uh, mm -hmm. it snowed like a motherfucker yesterday. Um, somehow it's all gone this morning, <laughs> but, uh, I called it, you know, had our, well, I mean, we talked and then I, I text Buck and kind of said, let's, let's try a different weekend. Um, anticipating travel problems today. It turns out it probably would have been fine, but uh, safety first and all that good shit. Drink responsibly. I don't know, whatever I'm supposed to say here. Um, yeah. So we'll, we'll try again with them, but I hope they're having an awesome anniversary party today. So we figured since we didn't make it down there, why not record at home? <laughs> that was weird. Right on. So what's been going on other than that? I'm assuming you saw Batman. I wanted to ask, and I wanted to ask that on the podcast because, God damn it, it was a new Batman movie. I know it's a beer oh, podcast, yeah. but that's important, damn it. Yeah, I, uh, you know, I'd been wondering kind of what it would take to get me back into a movie theater with uh, all the insanity of the last couple of years, the thought of sitting next to a bunch of strangers, probably most of whom, you know, aren't wearing masks for multiple hours. Um, didn't well, sound real appealing. <laughs> So I, I did miss several in theaters. Um, you know, I would really like to see Spider-Man and um, Scream in theaters, but couldn't, couldn't make myself pull the trigger. Both of those came out during the kind of the latest Omicron crap. So I finally, I was like, God damn it, it's Batman. I've seen every, every Batman movie I've, uh, that's come out in my life. So starting with uh, 89 in theaters uh even even shit like the lego batman movie and mask of the phantasm and you know that kind of stuff so i wasn't gonna miss this one so yeah we did um we did go check it out last weekend um and, and it wasn't too crowded everything felt pretty good uh we went early in the morning but um and plus shit's on the downside anyway but well that's a long motherfucker but it sure was good right yeah, I've never a fan of movies that hit that three hour mark. Never. And especially when you're buying tickets and it warns you, hey, there's going to be like 20 minutes of previews before yeah. you watch the three hour movie. I'm like, damn it. Plus, knowing that it was going to come out like in April, April something is going to be out on HBO Max. Yeah. But, you know, I, I had to go see it too in theaters. And for it being long and it felt long, I never got up to piss and I had to because I, I didn't either. I never got up. Yeah. <laughs> I was like, I don't. I like I had to I had to piss pretty bad. I'm like I, I'm not finding a point to where I think I can make it out and not miss something right. fucking cool. So right. I just sat there, kind of in pain. <laughs> I was wasn't awesome. I wasn't to that level, but I definitely. Oh yeah, that. not that fuck. Especially once it got to like broke two hours, and I'm just like fuck, man. Can I go now? I bet I could go now. And then <laughs> something else would happen. I'm like God, nope, fuck it. Yeah. I will just make the fucking beeline as, as soon as the credits roll. So I didn't stay for the after credit stuff. Um, but I couldn't. Yeah, you, I couldn't. you didn't miss much with that. I, I looked beforehand too to see if there was anything. I was like, is it like I look? Is it worth staying in like like one of the um, where it shows the link for the article and said no, it's not. I'm like, sweet. <laughs> Good enough. So I bounced. 
was yeah. like one of the first times because most of the movies that I do see in the theaters are the big movies like that that have the after credit stuff. And you never, you know, see people get up. I'm like, why are you getting up? You're missing nah, that time. I was like, fuck it. And I was one of the few people <laughs> that got up to leave. But yeah, it was awesome. I, re- I thoroughly enjoyed it. Yeah. He has cut his fucking hair to play Bruce Wayne. I'm sorry. Yeah. I mean, my one thing was his Bruce Wayne was so different than any Bruce yeah. Wayne that I've seen on cinematic. But the performance I mean, wouldn't have bothered me that much. It was just that he looked like, I, I don't know, man. Like, how, first of all, how do you hide all that hair under the mask? Um, <laughs> but yeah, it, it just looks stupid to me. It looked like a Twilight character. So, but I promise, I have hope for like what he does with this universe. I think it's going to be awesome. Yeah. Penguin show on HBO, and I guess there's there's a police show too, right? Probably better. Uh, yeah, Gotham PD or Gotham. something. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, so I'm, I'm, I'm excited for what they can do with this universe and what story that dude will tell next and stuff. Um, got me hooked up, got my, my bang glass. Nice. The little, I've, I love how the reference to everything in that universe that that dude did. I've got peacemaker over my shoulder here. So, oh shit. Yeah. So did you watch that? Oh yeah. God damn it. That show, man. Yeah. So, so fun, good. good. James Gunn is fucking awesome with yeah. the, the stuff he does. I'm sitting here like, I didn't know I liked John Cena as an actor. Right? <laughs> Every time I see him pop up and stuff, I'm just like, oh, man. And he was he was fucking good. Yeah. It was so good. So good. That fucking intro. Mm-hmm. I had never changed so quick on it. Like, what the fuck is this? This is awesome is what this is. Right? <laughs> Seven or eight episodes. So, so good. And for it to spin off the Suicide Squad, that character, like remember when they talked about making that show, I'm like, off that character? Yeah. Take that shot. I'm not going to lie, when I I heard that, I assumed it was an attempt at a cash grab because Cena had name value and stuff. Built in fan base, but fuck, that was an obscure-ass character. They turned that into a good show. So good. And, And spoilers, but that fucking Justice League cameo at the end, I was like, they're going there. Right. And, for, and, and it's fucking canon that Aquaman fucks fish in the DCEU. <laughs> That's amazing. Yeah. Yeah. And he said fuck. Yeah. That's awesome too. Yeah. Yeah, it's good shit. I'm curious what happened with, because I guess they had the other members of the Justice League. He had them and they had to cut it out for some reason. Curious why they had to do that. Yeah, it's, it seemed like it had something to do with, I mean, from what I heard anyway, it had something to do with maybe they didn't want to spoil who the Batman is going forward. After um, the events of the Flash, so many? I'm not sure. Yeah, that is, you said that's next year. Yeah, they pushed it. Can't wait for that too. That, that's the extent of my nerd knowledge on this stuff. I'm, yeah, yeah. That's awesome though. Get Michael Keaton back. All this shit's so weird and cool. Yeah. Okay. People want to hear us talk about beer. I guess. Sure. <laughs> Maybe they don't care. I don't know. <laughs> uh, I don't know. I guess I, I don't remember if I mentioned this on the last episode or not. So I wanted to get out there early in this episode. Um, our friend Matt Solens has been on the show many times, uh, a couple different breweries. And uh, well, and then when he was working with, um, I forget the name of the, the weed place, but anyway, yeah, yeah, there you go. Um, anyway, he, he has accepted a, a job as a, uh, a tapper manager for stone cloud in stillwater uh awesome. so so their their new tap room in stillwater so their second location is is uh coming along i text him yesterday sounds like it's six to eight weeks potentially um so you know it's probably sometime in may i guess um anyway yeah like you said awesome i uh want to make sure and get that out there we're Excited as fuck to go check that out, and for sure, you know, I'm sure we'll do a do a show with Matt and uh, drink some really good beer in Stillwater. Yeah, Stone Cloud's awesome too. It's cool to have them have another location. It'd be cool if it was closer, Tulsa. Yeah, I know. Do one in Tulsa, <laughs> fuckers. <laughs> but hey, it is what it is. Yeah, I'm liking that phrase a lot lately. <laughs> There's well, plenty of opportunity to use it. <laughs> right. Yeah. Um, 
I guess on that second location front, I did actually see some beer news. I guess I just saw it yesterday or the day before that, that uh, American Solera is getting a second location oh. uh, on that side of the state in Edmond. And I, isn't there, if it's going into that Ice House project in Edmond, and isn't there another brewery that was saying they were going into that? Or is there where Oklahoma was going to go? Yeah, I couldn't remember if it was Oklahoma or Majestic. Maybe Beast Majestic Beast, yeah. One of those. So looks like two breweries will be in that that project is kind of cool maybe more um yeah i didn't see how soon that was going to be did you happen to see i, is it this I year? didn't see a timeline it sounded like uh it was you know yeah not that far off but uh yeah i mean i know a lot of folks in oklahoma city um and i think it's always one of those things where when you can't get it regularly you really you really drool over it. it's probably why i feel the way i do about stone cloud and stuff yeah if i could get it more easily maybe i wouldn't be quite <laughs> Not that it's not good beer, but maybe I wouldn't be quite as enamored with it. And I think people in OKC kind of are like that with Solera, where it's like, oh, yeah, sure. you know, man, I wish I wish that was here. Well, it's going to be there. Um, I wonder what that'll do for their beer releases if it'll make those not as fucking chaotic and so many people, if or if they'll still just do it like no you've got to come here for this month or you've got to. No way, that here. shit's too too much trade bait just doubles the opportunity for people to, <laughs> to do that i guess if they do them at both locations yeah true um yeah and then uh well and, and it's not a second location but we've, we've got another another opening that's been announced since the last time we recorded um and it's for good cause brewing um um which is Andrew Whitney, you know, Calibri L works. He did some time at Broke Brewing, did some time at the Cave. Um, and now he's starting up another brewery of his own, Good Cause Brewing. So they're going in on, um, sounds like it's on Cherry Street, but not like that, not that main district that people are kind of familiar with. It's a little ways up the road where Reesers is, kind of near that, like more like 15th and Lewis. And still oh, okay. Area. okay. Okay. Huh. Um, anyway, it's not like that it was probably slated for sometime this summer, which we can name to get him on the show for a long time. So maybe we can make that happen finally. Um, Man, a lot of memories in that, that area. <laughs> you're lying. Not all good. <laughs> By no means. I could say that about most places in town that, uh, that have any kind of alcohol establishment. And not a lot of times, not it doesn't even have to be that. It's just, yeah, right. <laughs> That's awesome. I, I've been everywhere, man. <laughs> <laughs> it, it was, and it was a majestic beast that was back in September. They announced that they were joining that that ice house project. Okay, but, right on. Uh, I should mention that uh, since last time we recorded, you know, our, our friend Joe uh, that's been on the show many times uh, and has worked for several breweries, he has moved on from Broken Arrow Brewing Company. Uh, he is now at Dead Armadillo. So congrats to Joe and best of luck on his uh, new adventure. And I'm sure if I know, hmm. if I know Joe, he's going to make sure we do a Dead Armadillo podcast sometime soon. <laughs> <laughs> is he brewing there? now too or tap room and then talk to him in person i don't know what all his exact responsibilities are going to be but yeah i suspect it'll be a little bit of everything i know he was going to be pouring it um shamrock the rose tonight for him so is that that festival yeah there's a festival tonight yeah huh. oh this is that time frame fuck yeah. wow and then I guess, I guess kind of one of the last things I had that's happened in the last month and a half or so, um, I did have to go down to Oklahoma City eh, probably about four weeks ago now to uh, pick up my latest Elk Valley member beer. And so while I was down there, I was like, eh, fuck it, I'll go, uh, I'll go check out a brewery I haven't been to. So I, I took a, a trek down to Norman. Um, oh, right on. And I was, I was intending to hit a few places, but uh, timing just only allowed me to go to one. So um, I went to Equity, which they've also got legally brewed there now. I think we talked about that on the last episode. Um, and I, I wasn't sure what to expect. I'd only had Equity's beer back when they were mailing it out. Uh, yeah. I might have had it at one festival, actually. I can't remember. 
was it at TCBI? I don't know. Anyway, I've had it one or two times, but I certainly never had it fresh in a tap room. So I, I was hoping um, to be impressed. <laughs> um, the tap room, tap room's smaller than I would expect, but it's, you know, it's got a nice little kind of like cozy vibe or whatever. Um, people there were very nice. Um, the, the beer wasn't. <laughs> And it's just, and that, you know, I, I'm not trying to shit on anybody. And, and I know some of the guys from Langley Brewed listen and, and I'm not, um, I, I tried one of their beers and, and I enjoyed it better than the equity beers. Um, man, I don't know. I, I, I know they're kind of new still. It, it tasted to me like homebrew with adjuncts thrown in to try to mask the off flavors. Yeah, that's what it felt like when we got. Uh, that's what I thought when we got those beers. When was that when they were sending those beers out? Has that been almost two years now? Two probably. It was, yeah, it was probably sometime during twenty. And that's what it felt like. It, it felt like it was somebody who just got into home brewing because yeah. there's a lot of delicious fucking homebrew beer out there, and it felt like somebody who just got into it. Um, and then I think even saw that they had said that that they had their brewer had just started brewing, which made sense. Um, like I remember it not being bad, but I remember it being like not polished at yeah. all. Yet. Um, yeah, it wasn't offensive. I didn't spit it out. I just, you know, I, I left after a flight. Yeah, I would hope by now that it would be a little bit better because they got a you know great message, great, a lot of good stuff out there. Exactly. Hopefully, the beer, hopefully the beer can catch up to it because there's a lot of that in the in the craft beer where some stuff takes precedence over the way the beer tastes and yes. should, shouldn't be like that so hopefully more uh i don't know the more they make or whatever it gets better yeah and i i don't mean to discourage anyone from uh from going to check them out if, if oh, you're sure. in the area i just uh i don't know don't want to be dishonest either um and you don't know if it improves if you don't try it so yep and at least they're not a shitty place making shitty yeah, beer. No, they're not all- shitty beer making you know, not the best beer. So yeah, they were all, they were all very nice and stuff like that. Uh, I did not announce myself either. Um, definitely was getting some looks. So I don't know if that was from the podcast or just because I was there by myself, but, uh, I don't you know. I, I, I wish them all the best. Uh, it was just, they, they also had like, I, I think it was 24 taps. It was a ridiculous number of taps. And oh, I'm sitting there like, there's a problem. <laughs> Yeah, right there. Get get it a few. Yeah, yeah. Right on. You always see that shit like on Hell's Kit or that sh- that Gordon Ramsay stuff. You're like, you got too much on your fucking menu. Yep. <laughs> Cut it down and make that stuff better. Kitchen yep. nightmares. That's probably it. Uh, it's on Bar Rescue and stuff too. And I used to watch that show. Um, he'd, he'd say a lot of the same shit. Uh, I also just wonder how long some of those kegs sit there if uh, they've got that many. So. Oh yeah. Oh yeah. Hmm. I don't know. Hopefully well, best of luck to them. Yeah, yeah, exactly. We've seen because there's been like that. We've I can't think of any right now, but I know for sure there's been breweries like that that have started off with you could tell not as good beer and then it drastically improves. So there's there's been breweries that have started off good, had a section of time where they sucked, and then come back around too. So exactly. All it takes is time. Time in a desire to make the product better. And I'm sure they've got that. Yeah. Hopefully. All right. Well, that's going to do it for this week. Jeremy, close this motherfucker down. That's going to do it for another episode of Pub Talk. If you like what you heard today, make sure you hit that subscribe button so you never miss an episode. You can find us on the web at pubtalkpodcast.com and on social media at pubtalkpodcast. And as always, never forget there's nothing in life too big or hard you can't handle it over a few beers with your good friends. Until next time, just chill till the next episode. Bye. See you.